I am a long time budgeter. When I say I have tried every single budgeting program that is out there, no lie, if it's out there, I've tried it. And what I've discovered is when it comes to any of the programs, there's always something that's missing for me. There's either something missing or there's a little bit too much going on. I've discovered that I am a lazy budgeter in some respects, more so maybe not lazy, but just short on time when it comes to tracking. So one of the issues I have found with budgeting is that when it came to my transactions, while I look at my bank account every day and I write down my transactions, when it comes to the end of the month, I just can never find time to reconcile. And so I asked myself, self, yes, how can you get beyond this and it be okay? I realized it has all to do with automation. So I am marrying two budgeting programs. Two of them I discovered, I gotta get comfortable for this. And for me, it has helped to streamline things for me for my budgeting, as well as my tracking and being able to see things without feeling the overwhelm of like too much information that I have to like gather and compare and things like that. And I know you know, you guys probably know where I'm going with this, starting with the budget mom's paycheck, budget by paycheck method. Her method is great if you are someone who is like meticulous with tracking and you wanna track and compare your category spent this month versus last month, debt percentages and all that. I don't care about all that. All I care is, am I overspending? And what I have discovered is with all of the budgeting programs, the one thing that was lacking is that I was still, no matter everything they told you to do, I was still overspending in certain categories, shopping and groceries. So it's taken me a bit of time. Things are still not perfect, but I wanted to share with you what I am doing now with the two budgeting programs. They're by mom's budget paycheck method. There are certain things from her method that I am keeping and I am marrying with what's called the real money method. The real money method is created by a group of, well, not a group, a husband and wife who, well, I guess they're groups, but anyway, a husband and wife who are Christians. And I truly, truly believe that taking some of what they have taught with some of what I've learned from the budget mom system and marrying them together is what is going to help me to stay on track. Now, I just started doing this about two months ago. And so I'm still working out some kinks. Like when I first started um, working on the real money method, I got my first overdraft in forever. I don't overdraft my account. And it really was just an oversight, but it's, you know, it takes a learning process when you're doing something new. So I just wanted to give you an overview. I am going to demonstrate it in real time in the near future, but let me just give you an overview. I have the digital version of the budget mom's budget by paycheck method. And this is the month of September. What I am taking from this method is the monthly spread. To me, the monthly spread is very important because it allows me to see my budget at a glance. The paycheck budgeting worksheets. These are very important to me because I am able to allocate exactly what each paycheck is going to, you know, to pay for whatever bills and expenses that come up. Now the real money method, they have sort of like a one spreadsheet thing where they allocate, it's, it's like very manual, but to me, it's not visual enough. And here's where things are gonna change a little bit. I will be doing the expense tracking, writing down like what I spend, but what I'm doing differently is I won't be reconciling these sheets at the end of every month. Like I just don't need to do that because in my bank account, I've decided to streamline everything to my bank account. Using cash is just not, it's just not productive for me. I'm using cash to save things, but then they're going right into my account. But using cash to spend on things, I always find that the cash is either not readily available to me because I don't want to carry around that whole, you know, cash envelope system. But I can create those same cash envelopes in my bank account. And this is what I learned from the real money method. I'm going to show you on the screen here. As you can see on the screen, 
I have, this is my checking account. I have a bills account and I also have a budgeting account. And then for every category, which would be a cash envelope, I have created a separate bank account for those things. Now, I'm not gonna, at first I thought, well, do I have to have a debit card attached to each of these? But the way they teach you in the real money method is that what you do is you have that budgeting account. And when you're going to spend from the categories, you just transfer that money right into your budgeting account. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail because you know, it is their proprietary program and I don't wanna like share too much. But essentially what I'm going to do is I'm using that account and I am marrying it with the tracking on paper, but not so that I can track like how much I spent in each category. Because at the end of the month, I can pull a report from my bank account that tells me what I spent in each category, the percentages. I'm actually more concerned about the percentages versus the dollar amount, as long as I am within budget to what I've allocated to those specific uh, envelopes which are digital envelopes, then I'm fine with that. I spend from it, if I spend it all, great. If I don't spend it all, then I'll just leave it in there until I need to spend it. Now I can just see like, what do I need for gross? What do I have for groceries? What do I have for transportation? What have you? The way I'm working with the Budget Moms tracking method is credit spending. So a lot of times I will use my credit card for the points, but also for just the ease of, you know, making a transaction, even going grocery shopping. I know that in my grocery envelope, in my US Alliance account, I may have, let's say I have $200. Well, I am tracking on here what I am charging. And then I created a column. I kind of changed things up a little bit. And then I am checking off when I've paid it. This way I know that while I made these credit card transactions, I need to know when I pay them. And I don't pay like, let's say a lump sum at the end of a week or end of a month. I literally pay the exact amount that I charge, even if I make five payments. Because once it hits my bank account and deducts that amount, when I see the amount, this is what I did differently. I go in and categorize that payment based on what category I spent. For an example, let's say I charged $40 in gas. When it hits my account as a $40 payment, it's just gonna say it's going to default to the category of credit card payment. Well, that's not helpful. So what I do is I go in and I manually, I'm able to manually change it from the category of credit card payment to transportation but here's where it gets even better. They allow you, this app allows you, this bank, they literally just upgraded their banking app, which is so great, where you can change the description as well. So it will retain the initial description. It may say like credit card payment, visa or whatever, um, or it may say, um, you know, wherever I, whoever I paid. Then I can go and create a, customized line where it says, I'll usually say payment to Apple for gas. That way at the end of the month, I can then pull a report and see the transactions by category or one grid. And it'll tell me like you spent 20% on transportation, 30% on housing, 40% on groceries, whatever, you know, the total, the total percentage, the pie chart is, I can just look at a glance and go, okay, this is where I spend the most of my money. I don't need to know the exact dollar amounts. And it'll also tell me if I have more cash going out than coming in because I'm filtering all those payments from my credit card paid through my bank account and categorizing them. This allows me to see all of what I did, all of what I've been doing on these sheets at a glance, I don't have to manually add up all the categories, but they're being added up for me digitally. So that's an overview of my new system. And so far, other than that one $15 overcharge fee, where it literally was just me when I made a payment, I made it from my budgeting payment account 
but the money was still in my bills account. I hadn't transferred it over yet. So my bad, it was my mistake. It was the learning process, but I don't make that mistake no more because I do not like paying nobody $15 for my mistakes. I will show it um, in a future video how I do this in real time. But as you saw on my bank accounts, how I have all of those on envelopes set up digitally as if they were cash envelopes. I am still doing cash envelope savings, which to me is more so for motivation. Seeing the cash as I'm taking it and putting it in envelopes, it's motivating to me and it makes it a little bit fun. So I do enjoy doing that. But at the end of the day, I'm not spending from the cash envelopes. All that money, once it's saved, will go into the bank account or whatever I plan to allocate it for. Usually when I do my cash envelope savings challenges, it's usually to prepare me for the upcoming summer for which I spent a lot of money during the summertime. For this video, I hope you found it useful. Maybe you will take some pointers from this. If you feel like you're struggling with like doing cash envelope spending and you know, all the tracking and stuff, this really does simplify things and digitizes a lot of the work. So oh, thanks for watching and I will catch you in my next video where I will demonstrate for you this whole system. Thanks.